Um, in terms of the imperfect uh, NHS system, the National Health Service system that we have here, um, Andrew Lansley, for instance, who's the health secretary in Great Britain, um, well, really, he's only in control of England, and England has no um, constitutional rights under the Westminster Parliament system of Great Britain, the United Kingdom, yeah? Um, it's own as healthcare is, is, is in Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland are under their own are devolved. They they have their own um, tax and spending governments, at least in respect of Scotland. Um, but Andrew Lansley wants to bring uh, all the um, tax and spending issue. Uh, the allocation of uh, resources into the hands of uh, general practitioners, which are like the comprehensive providers of uh, of uh, basic medicine in Britain. Okay, in the United States, it, he would be like your private um, family doctor, you know, and uh, like in the Waltons, like they they come in and fix all your problems um, for a, for a, a fee. But in the British system, you would go in and you would have, it would be free on the point of demand, at least at the start, but it would be the GP who decides how much money and how much resources that you as a patient will receive. But the problem is, is they have been trained as doctors. They have not been trained as administrators. So, therefore, the amount of time that they're actually going to spend doing medicine is going to be reduced. Whereas the amount of time they're going to spend doing bureaucracy is going to be increased. So therefore, if you went into medicine to treat people and not to be a bureaucrat, because all the uh, bureaucrats who are civil servants have been sacked by the government, what are you going to do? Are you going to deal with the pressure, carry on going, or are you going to leave the profession and probably go private? Because you will know, handling your own budget, that there is a private private firms that with doctors in them that you're sending patients to and those private doctors are getting a lot more money than you and not having to deal with any bureaucracy because they will have an HR department and managers and everything else to deal with that. So obviously it's uh, by stealth trying to privatise the NHS. Now Americans are Republicans watching this video. Uh, conservative Republicans, I mean, uh, might say, "Well, what's wrong with that?" You know, well, that means rationing, rationing healthcare. Um, you may say, "Oh, well, that's what's going to happen with a government-made system." But in the United States, as I've explained through this series on healthcare and organizational economics and central banking, you have a surplus, but you're still rationing. Your healthcare via um, price signals, which are being artificially changed by the fact that you've got regulatory capture, i.e., the corporations have captured have captured the regulator, whether that be the government or institutes that they've set up in the university systems, you know, or where wherever, uh, sort of like, you know. Um, we regulate you, but oh, if you want some funding, maybe you could get this passed through a think tank to the government to make it policy. It's that kind of idea, or maybe you know, um, you know, come come with me and the uh, wife and kids to to the golf course this Saturday. It's it, you know it, those sort of things influence people's perceptions of each of each other, even though the regulator might think, you know. Uh, the, the, the CEO of this company is just trying to be friendly or something it, the back of his mind he must know that he's being bribed um, so our system ok imperfect before Lan Lansbury uh, Lans Lansbury whatever his name is the, the British Health Minister for Health um, what you had there was you had firms competing to produce me medical technology and medicines they were competing to provide the health service for beds. 
Um, and by beds, I don't mean like just a bed. I mean all the equipment it and, and the expertise that go with it. Okay. But of course, that's an imperfect system because, of course, you're going to have because it's free at the point of demand, um, as it should be in my view. You're still going to have people who are going to want to go to uh, be treated when. Well, um, and they're still going to be in competition with other patients, so you're going to get waiting lists. But maybe waiting lists are better than a guy who's, who's got a hernia and a infected appendix dying of blood poisoning at, at home, you know, rather than being able to get back help, to be healthy and then go back mining down in the, in the coal mines of Virginia to, to produce more energy so that America is not dependent on um, terrorist crime families like the Saudis and Bin Laden's for their for their oil, you know. And the only thing that the that Newt Gingrich has ever said that I agree with is that no American president should ever go and have to vow loyalty to the King of Saudi Arabia, um, who only made him, you know, is is not in, you know, kinship doesn't come from divine right; it comes from people chopping each other's heads off in the desert, you know, and getting their sovereignty recognised by Churchill and Roosevelt so that the Saudis would provide them with, with oil um, to fight against the Soviet Union, you know, and Nazi Germany, for instance. Um, and, of course, all of that oil money is facilitating the... Saudi and Bin Laden's control over banking and oil and the movement of jihadism within which they want to sponsor their own uh, neo-feudalist ideas of dominating the world through neo-feudalism. And that's the, the system where a, a family can own other people uh, in their conception. You know? um, <clears throat> and that's what American Marines and are dying for to pre to to prevent um, now of course Gingrich would say you know dig up all the all the forests and coal mine and everything else uh, strip the strip the land the resources is that the best way to go as I said with um, with providing healthcare in the British system you've got companies competing against each other to provide the National Health Service with um, beds and equipment and sometimes nurses and nursing assistants um, and cleaners and things like that. So it's not completely a public government run system but it is taking a recognition that people are paid in through their taxes to that system yeah? and it is free at the point of demand you know uh, people who, who could never afford to um, have, uh, you know, have their life-threatening diseases um, cured are able to be cured, and they are able to go back to work and live productive lives, have children, and carry on. So that over time, the research into those um, illnesses is decreasing and decreasing the the amount of those diseases in the healthy population. Um, whether that is happening in the United States for the general population rather than just the select few who can afford it, I don't know, really. Perhaps you could provide me with some more information on that. 